They've never won at a high level. And understand what a high level is. Understand something. Human nature, human nature is to take the easy way out. Human nature, actually, unless in very few people, to be excellent or great at something, very few people have the drive and dedication to do it. None of us do. It's, it's a learned habit. Excellence is a learned habit. And you have to learn and demand it from yourself. It's not natural. It's, human nature is to do, make an A on a test, well, I got the now I make an F, I get a C. I say that in class. I mean, that's a mentality. And you can't, you can't think that way. And people say, well, athletes, you're crazy. Why can guys score 30 one night and score five the next? You're watching NBA basketball. You're watching pro football. You watch it in every sport out there. It's human nature. And we as coaches have to get them to demand and understand how to focus old, young, everything. And, and to put that killer instinct in there. And like I say, you see it across the country every week in all kinds of teams. That's why there's upsets. That's why there's things. You have to learn to develop it. And it's a culture. It's a habit. Just like a family. What's in the house? You always say, good parents, good sound home, good kid, does everything right, da 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 And sometimes you have good parents, good sound home, kids a knucklehead. Why? I mean, I don't know. We, but you have to keep ingraining, you believe in, putting them in situations, teaching, educating. And I believe it's education and technical issues that we have to get on. Because I do not believe, I truly don't, it's not want to or it's not effort. It's a learned thing. Excellence is something, it's a learned habit that we have to keep developing and understand. Coach, one question from Gary Smith from the Times Union in Jacksonville. Uh, if your team is in, in the similar setting, end of game situation, mm -hmm. do you consider, are you concerned about the negative thoughts creeping back in and what does the coaching staff do specifically to address those and help them overcome and, and Every day in practice, talk about the positive. And understand why you go to the, we fight to get in those situations. And that when you get in those situations, you can't become outcome oriented. Because if negative thoughts come in, it's, it's, you're, they're negative about failure. You're being negative because you're worried about failing. You can't be worried about failing. And you truly you can't be worried about success. What you have to be fail, what you're worried about is the actual play and what it takes to execute it. And that's it. The fundamental facts, no matter what time in the game it is, it's a learned habit. And that's what you have to do. And, and, and you have to put them in that situation. Listen, the process. The process. When I'm here, if I do this, this, and this, I make the kick. If I do this, this, and this, I make the throw. If I do this, this, and this, I make the block. If I do this, this, and this, I cover it. If I do this, this, and this, I tackle it. Or I shed the block. And that's, everybody wants to see that there's something magical out there. You ever heard Tiger Woods? You ever hear the great, you ever hear it on Mike and Mike in the morning? You ever listen to Mike and Mike in the morning? Hmm. And they don't believe him. And, my, and Golick tries to tell Mike about how an athlete thinks. And he asked him about Tiger Woods, what he was thinking about. when he made, Remember the putt he tied? And it, was, it was a U.S. Open or PGA? U.S. Open. US, US Open. He tied and went into, and, went into, and then won it. Remember, and, he had to, and, and it was a 17-footer or something like that? What were you thinking about? Well, I was thinking about that I had to hit the ball right here because it was going to be right. He said, you know, you think that's no one. I didn't think about the outcome. I'm, not, I'm worried about making the putt. What it takes to make the putt. Because if I make the putt, then I get the outcome. And in the common world, you guys don't want to believe that. The athletes that are successful at high level, that's how they think. They don't think about the outcome. They don't think about winning the championship. They think about playing to win the championship. Executing to win the championship. And you have to be there sometimes to have that happen. But you have to learn to focus, and that's what you've got to believe. Because thinking about wanting to win ain't going to make me make that putt. What's going to make me make that putt is be fundamentally sound over it. What's the break? What's the speed? How am I going to hit it? Where's my head? Where's my hands? Where's my balance? That's what's going to make you make the putt. Or a kick, or a throw, or a tackle, or a defensive play. That's how athletes think. The great ones. And that's how we're going to teach our guys to think. And we're going to educate them. And it's going to be a process. I've said that all along. Change doesn't bring wins. Execution brings wins. And belief and a family foundation and a core structure in your organization that everything they touch, not just ball, education, life skills, dealing uh, and our, 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 out there in community service, whatever it is, education, everything, tutors, study halls, that they get it right, they understand the process, what they're trying to accomplish, and it's based on excellence. Because it becomes a habit. Excellence is a learned habit. Is it, 
is it is it tempting at all? I, I guess my question is: Are there shortcuts you could take that that some people might take to shore up problems in the short term? Like what? I, I don't know. Like just scheme wise, minimizing certain things and not asking. Worse, that was you been. What I'm asking is: Are you are you still very long term? Thought process oriented, or are you just trying to win this game? I'm long. I'm, I'm still trying to win this game. I'm not going to do anything not to win this game. But winning this game or winning long term is the same. There's not a. I mean, I can't, I can't make somebody fall out of the sky. <laughs> but I mean, you, you're asking some guys who haven't done it before. So like who? Uh, you want me to name certain yeah. guys? Yeah. Well, Bert Reed. You're asking him to make a play that he hasn't maybe made before. Yeah, he has made. Not, not, not consistently. Yeah. Not so, consistently. Who else are you going to ask? Well, that's what I'm saying. Is, is the <laughs> who, who is temptation? There's other guys. Well, yeah, Willie Halstead made a bunch of them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ty made some. Rodney Smith caught a touchdown. Lonnie Pryor scored two touchdowns. Christian threw it all over the field. I mean, there's other guys. Certain times, when you get in certain situations, coverage dictates. You can't go. They, they're going to double Willie. They're going to double that guy. Everybody's got to be accountable <coughs> across the board. You're only as strong as your weakest link. And we can, I mean, it's like up front. Ronnie did a heck of a job on couples. We let him cut him early, did some things, blocked him. The couples made some plays, but he did a heck of a job. I mean, certain things, and when you get to against good people, everybody has to be accountable for what they're going to do. And if they've done it in, the, in one half, Burt's made some plays in the game. Ran a reverse to score games, made big plays. Burt's done it. But I, I say that, Burt's counted upon because he's the older guy. He's the guy that's been in the program. He's the guy that's been here at times. And I think Burt's doing some good things. Caught over 100 balls since he's been here. But you, everybody has consistency levels. And I'm not trying to single Burt out because I don't think Burt's all of our problem. I mean, we, he does some things and missed a couple plays, but there's a lot of problems out there in consistency. And, and, and it, it's not just team-wise. I think it's organizational. We're trying to build that infrastructure and where we're at. And, and some, people don't believe where we're having to come from and what we're having to do. It's not an excuse, and, and, but that's the facts. And we're going to build it, and we're going to do it right, and we're going to have success. And you've got to keep putting them out there to have success. And I'm not trying to, I mean, if there's another example, please, I mean, I'm not trying to argue with I guess it. my question is, you talked about these guys, haven't, they don't know how to win, or they don't know how to win consistently and play at that level consistently. Is there a temptation to not, I don't want to say beat your head against all the guys who have learned one way and move on to guys who haven't? Well, because I've seen them do it at times, and you have to have faith in them. And other guys, if they're, now some guys, here's the thing, you can throw some guys into the fire before they're ready, and what's that do to them? Ruin them. And you can ruin them. I mean, you know, you know, if, if there's a problem that can be fixed today, hey, I, 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 I promise. I'm, now, there may be one there that I'm missing. I'm not saying that's, that's light. I mean, you do that all the time. That's the decisions you have to make. But I'd fix one. I, I, we put somebody in there. That, our job is to win and be successful. And I'm gonna get because I owe it to everybody on the team, and it's a fan and everybody else to put the best things out there. You know, I mean that that's what you try to do to do, to be successful. But you know, if there was, we would definitely do it. Coach, you said when you play against good people, almost sounds like you're recognizing the second half of the schedule. No, I said you play against the teams you played are pretty good. BC is one of the better defenses. North Carolina is loaded with talent. Have some good players, you know. Clemson's very talented on defense, has skilled guys on offense, you know, offensive line. I mean, they you know you keep getting better and better. And, and I think we had some athletic advantages at times in some earlier games that I don't think were as, as drastic as they are now. I mean, and, and, and teams also, as teams get better. The second half of the season, most teams all get better. you got to understand that, too, no matter who you are. Unless the injuries hit them and hurt them, most teams always improve. So the teams you play the second half of the season – are always better than they are in the first half of the season, majority of the time, and how you're doing things. If they're being, and there's some really good coaches in this league. And I don't mean just because of their talent level, but I mean, if, you know, I bet you if you go look at all the teams we played in Wake and uh, who else we play early, San, whether Sanford or who, I mean, uh, I'm trying to think who else we play. BYU, different. I mean, I bet everybody's better if you really look at it. And as you play better and during the year, you got to, you know, your execution. You need to keep executing better, and we're doing some good things. Got to do them a little better. Talking about getting better, have you ever seen a kid from one year to the next improve more against your team than the ace kid? They played a great game. Yeah, he had a great game, and he's had a good year. I mean, they've done some good things. They're very strong on the offensive line, protecting him very well. And, uh, you know, they, they did a very nice job. They did a very nice job. He played He played a very good game. Hit all his deep balls and was checking down, finding underneath routes, and let him down there. They did a really good job. As a coach, uh, not to... 
harp on one play from last year, but the play against Clemson where, where Christian gets hurt, do you think about all the 